Peace world, peace world. I'm JYD. And I'm G. You're now tuned into the Poet Life Podcast. Hosted by none other than New Ones. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's doing good. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Good weekend. Happy good, Thursday. Good weekend. Happy Thursday. You Hope know? you guys are safe out here. Yeah, yeah, especially down there in the Carolinas. Shout out to those in the Carolinas. You know, hopefully everybody evacuated in enough time. Got to a safe place around family, friends, and loved ones. You mm-hmm. dig? I know this is going crazy. Did you see the news? For news like, what? For Carolina? For just in general. Like, even in Virginia, they was in Dumfries and Walmarts. Just milk, water, bread, eggs. I think everybody knew it wasn't going to be serious on this side because when I went to Walmart, it was none of that going on. It was still stuff on the shelves. I mean, maybe the water. You know what I mean? But uh, it wasn't no big, you know, crazy... Man, listen. Lines like you would thought it was. Okay. Them jokers down there. VA was like, I'm listen. VA, but, but VA was flooded the whole I time. I need my... They was taxing for water, too. Somebody told me this, like, selling them for $9 a case. You can't do that to the people. Like, that's not even... Either somebody looking for a come up or... His water is scarce. It. I don't get it, man. I don't know, man. But um, today, 13th, it. right? 13th, uh, Tupac. Tupac. Um, you know, definitely thought about that today. Absolutely. Icon. Man. Giant. So, I had a question. Yeah. And this is a random question, but it's two, it's two questions. I want to ask. Tupac or Biggie first, and then that's the second Come part. on, man. But but listen, listen, listen. You can, you, you can explain why and, and all. But, you know, Tupac or Biggie, because it was a question that I got in the group chat. Uh, ah. Happy birthday. Not, not birthday. Not birthday, not birthday. birthday. Passing. Yeah. Passing, 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 passing. Excuse me. Apologize. Much respect to Tupac Shakur. I, it's, that's a tough. It's tough. Why would you ask me that? Because it's, it's, it's different reasons. Yeah. I have different reasons for both. Yeah. I personally will say Biggie. For for the flow, the flow, yeah, yeah, the flow, the flow, the tone. You know, I would say for the uh, for the bars, just like not necessarily because Tupac had bars too. Let's not get that mixed up in any way, shape, form. And he had flow, but Biggie's flow was so smooth to me, yeah. like like. Yeah. Like butter. And you had to think, man, Biggie, no disrespect, but he wasn't like an attractive brother that could just walk up to you. Like, if he didn't have flow, brother, brother, like, it's tough. Yeah. His flow, his energy that he was given, the fact that he could just rap sitting there mm. like he was to me he was what he was what i would call a conversational hip-hop artist mm-hmm. where you could just sit there and just you would think that he just talking to you but he's rapping mm-hmm. and it was like groovy now tupac had storyline he was an educator he was somebody like he would address certain issues and put it to music that was like he was a visionary mm-hmm. He peeped stuff for what it was, and he used his art to educate his people. Okay. I would say that. Whereas, you know, Biggie he was more so, like, into the, you know, the party scene. Man, he made you think mm-hmm. with the bars and how he just connected words, and he had, like, this Rubik's Cube way of making you figure out what he mm-hmm. was saying. Right? It wasn't as serious as Pac was, like, for the most part. Yeah. Okay. You know, Ready to Die will still, like, will always and forever just go play. I will press play one time, won't skip through nothing, and just vibe to that. All eyes on me, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is for my N-words, you know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? It's it's too much, man. It's too much. What would you say? I would say, uh, so if I had to just, like, so flow, flow, I'd say Biggie. I'll say flow for Biggie, but overall cool, I'll go for cool, Tupac, cool, cool. because just just for like the presence, the overall like he was like the complete package pretty much. He had, yeah, he had he had a total package. He was in movies, he was TV, he was a, he was a rapper, activist, 
Um, oh, we're going you know, there. See, now you're not. No, I'm saying oh. that's why I said so you can explain why for whatever. So, the question okay. I'm going to ask you, the second question is this So, are you lyrics or presence? Mm. When it comes to your poetry, are you lyrics or presence? That's tough, too, man. Yeah. Because stage presence is everything when mm. you're performing your piece. Like, even if it's on the radio, like, people have have to hear that presence of your voice. Mm. Like, if you're just reading it, like, off a piece of paper, it's hard for people to get into. And I was never really a fan of doing that. Mm. Like, ah, oh, man. Percentage, out of 100%, I would say... 60% presence, 40% lyrics. Okay. And it will, like... Because you can sit there, like, case in point. Mm -hmm. J. Cole has lyrics. Mm -hmm. He will make you think. Yeah. J. Cole sits down in a chair at his concerts and will really just rap. Mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar has presence, mm -hmm. but he also has lyrics, you know? Like he will, that both of them will set a scene for you to really enjoy the song. Right. Whether it be like posting, like I know, like J Cole posts like things on like the uh, jumbotron or mm. something, and Kendrick Lamar will have like people acting out stuff. Okay. On stage, stage presence is big. I don't care what nobody says. Like stage presence it, is key. Yeah, it's key. Because it's a lot of people, it's a lot of great artists, I could say, who don't have stage, good stage presence, but are very good artists. Yeah. You know, they have very strong lyrics. So strong lyrics only get you but so far because there are only a certain group of people, I think, who are fans of just the music, mm. you know, versus the art of stage presence. Okay. What would you say? So I always just said, I was just said, get out of here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> J. Cole got a presence. <laughs> Don't disrespect the goat. <laughs> I'm not disrespecting the goat, but I'm just saying he can literally sit down his whole concert and still rock out the whole time. Like he has that make you think storyline, kind of like Pop. He has storyline. He would sit there and just make you think. He addresses issues and like in an artistic way to be yeah. like, dog, I ain't even think about it like that. And yeah, it's entertaining. I think it's kind of it's it's kind of kind of difficult to try to try to choose because like you yes. need you need both. You need both yes, of those in order to be successful um, in, in 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 this field. Um, I would I would even go. 55, 45, I don't know, well, not 55, 45, but 55, 35, probably not that, probably 50, 50, I don't know, because uh, you got to be able to command attention, Yeah. one, command attention, when you got the attention, have something to say, two, so I'll go 50, 50 on that, man, I'll go 50, 50, that, that's the kind of reason why I chose Pac over Biggie, because I feel like Pac, even, even, even though B had friends, don't get me wrong, I think, if Pac could walk to the mall, And just walk around like I don't know, East Baltimore, you know, West Baltimore, <laughs> you know, just 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 walking around. I think you know, oh, it's not as pop. It'll be like a crowd, like a, a army of sea of people following them. Same thing with Biggie. They're icons, but not too many people can have that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I, I want to talk about it for a second. Just open things up because I, I was thinking about today the Biggie pop question, man. But uh, topic of today, man, we want to continue. What we talked about last episode. About, okay. about yeses and noes and acceptance and rejection. And I kind of want to go on to the evils of noes and yeses. And, okay. you know, we, we can just talk about that. Like, you know, first things first, like, the evils being, like, you know, four, four devils, envy, jealousy, lesson, greed, things like that. Mm. Uh, when it comes to noes and yeses, how access can lead to certain things. So let's, let, let's, let's start with jealousy, man. Um, I think I think this is a lot about you know knowing who you are, knowing you know where you at in the game, knowing what you want to do. And as young artists, just like you know we see in the social media all the time, it's easy to 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 look at somebody else's thing and be like, man, what am I doing? Or I wish I had that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the envy, envy and jealousy part, like just wanting to be 
with somebody else's. You know, I know when I started out, it was some artists that I, I looked at and like, man, I really wanna, I really wanna get there. I can't mm-hmm. wait till I get there. Can't wait. You know, but uh, it's just a point where maybe it can lead you down a certain path where you feel less than, and you feel like you have to do so much, you know, to get to where they are, that maybe you act out of character. You know what I'm saying? So it can be kind of, kind of, kind of tempting. You know, to fall into those that. traps or those pitfalls. Yeah, no, nah, I feel you know, that. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever experienced, you know, anything like that? You know what I mean? Like, as an artist coming up, I mean, maybe not now, but how about before? I mean, even now sometimes, okay. like, just to be honest, I catch myself in that. Yeah. Because you want to make it so bad and you have, like, dreams. Mm-hmm. You really envision yourself on that certain stage or in that in the presence of talking to, you know people that you idolize almost in Mm -hmm. this field and it's like man and you see people you bump shows with people who've done that yeah and you're not necessarily saying like yo hot and can we just switch lives for like Mm -hmm. two days so i can get my stuff out there and just see how i feel but comparison kills man because you go back to like that's the thing i think that's a key ingredient of jealousy is comparing your 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 stuff to somebody else's Mm -hmm. like you don't know what it took for them to yeah, get that. Yeah, the unseen hours, man. Yeah, man. Like, we got the same 24 hours. What are you doing with yours versus what they're doing with theirs? What they're doing with theirs is none of your business because it's outside your control. Mm-hmm. I like, And that's just that's a stoic mindset. Only focus on what you can control. Mm-hmm. So with that said, like, yeah, I've, I've been there in a situation where, like, dang, man, that's dope. Like, you're not, like, hating, mm-hmm. but you're jealous that, like, the when is it my turn like when when can i yeah that question in my mind when is it my turn when is it my turn yeah yeah yeah. and it's like you gotta wait your turn you're patient 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 but you feel like you've been patient for so long like tired i I want to if it would have hit you right now would you be ready to handle everything that comes with it no Right. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, you want you know what it. Saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want it, but you're not ready for it. Yeah, you're, you're not, you're not responsible. Yeah. You're not you haven't matured in your art yet. And it's so much that you, you gotta learn. Well, I have to learn, I'm just being honest, it's like my pen is not as strong as the people that, you know, I'd be like, dang man, why how could how mm. did they get there versus me? So it just makes me work harder. Like and sometimes for for it, since we're focusing on the negative stuff, it kind of made me put my pen down and just like step away from writing because you feel so like not good enough yeah like these jokers is getting like I will be literally on social media and I will see people in different areas that I follow on social media doing the same stuff in the same art form that we're doing get you know x amount of likes have x amount of followers just be traveling and all that stuff like I don't I don't ask like, man, what they what what is their day job? Mm-hmm. What they do? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what is they gas tank on E type yeah, stuff? Like, yeah. what's what's they budget look? You know, I don't ask that. What's really like, going on? I just sit there like, man, I gotta get it, cause this is what I enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. So it flips from the jealousy of why when is it gonna be my turn to, all right, my turn coming. Until then, like, you got to work. What else I got to do? What else I got to do? Like, it's a quote that say, when the, when the teacher is ready, the student will appear. Mm. And I know that's, like, that's very that different than, than this, but <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of relatable. You know, when, when, when the poet is ready, the opportunity will appear. I guess you can say it like that. Yeah. You know, when opportunity, when the poet is ready, it'll be bountiful, uh, boundaryless, plentiful opportunities. Right. So my thing is... Oh, my question for you is, uh-huh. what do you do while you're waiting? Practice. Keep keep grinding. Okay. I mean, simple answer, but honestly, like, you, you really have to just make sure that you're ready when when, when when it comes, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to, we were talking about this earlier, you don't, you don't want to just be trying to wait for it to fall in your lap. No, that's real. You know what I mean? You want to keep grinding. You want to keep showing and proving that, that you are worth this opportunity. Like, it's like, it's like making your calling an election short. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like... If you are in a position to be a poet, to be a spoken word artist, like, okay, show and prove that you are worth this title. Because it's not just like, I know, I know it's, you know, we see it as common and it's common as an art uh, form, uh, but not as um, 
profitable as other art forms. Right. So it's kind of like, okay, you're a poet. Oh, okay, you do poetry at the cafes or you're at the lounges. Okay, cool. You know, it's not necessarily how we want, the, like, what we want poetry to be. Like, yo, this can be on the Grammys. This can be on, you know. All right, this is we can a category. Open the open Oscars Grammys. up. Yeah. You know, this can be something, you know. You have to keep grinding until you get there. I mean, shoot. I'm thinking about a, a good a good guy I know uh, just had a million streams of, of one of his songs on Spotify. Mm. Talented young brother, talented young artist, you know what I'm saying, rapper. He went to the show and everything. Talented young artist, man. A million streams on Spotify. And I look at that and I'm like, man, I respect it. Yeah. And, and for, for, for a moment, it wasn't even like a, man, I wish that was me. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, that's... And, and I seen like people who was like commenting, liking, it's like, yo, you know, dude, uh, Toby, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Uh, what's what's the brother name? He um, I found him on Instagram. Like he making IG videos. Him and his wife and, and another girl. They got the the uh, Nike slides. They you know what I'm saying. Erica Badu said he dope. He got the you know you know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh Tizzy. tizzy. Nah, not Tizzy. It's Toby something. Uh oh, man, I, I couldn't tell. But you but he he got hot like off the videos he put on YouTube and IG and everything like that. And now. He got people like Erica Badu and Dave Chappelle saying, yo, this brother dope, this dude's hype. Gotcha. And it's like he been grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding and quiet as kept, he came up, you know what I'm saying? So it's similar to what's going on here, you know what I mean? It's just, just keep on going, keep on grinding. But again, man, realistically, you have those feelings, you have those thoughts, you have those doubts. Yeah. But it's like, what voice is going to win? You know what I mean? I... And that's the battle, you know. The voice. So, so for me, it's. I feel like it's what works for you. Okay. Because some certain people can use that jealousy and turn it into something healthy, mm-hmm. right? Oh man. Oh, okay. He doing that. Like you. We see it in, in shows. Like when we're doing shows, and you look around the audience, you see the people who are like really into what we're saying. Mm-hmm. Then you see the people that just be sitting there like this. Mm-hmm. And they're artists, they're mm-hmm. poets, and they would come up to us, hey man, nice job. Mm-hmm. Like a half a dap, like mm-hmm. come on brother, like I, I know. You don't gotta fake it, Greg. You don't gotta fake it, you know, if you're feeling like you are, you know, competing with me and that's your bag to mm-hmm. help you work harder, cool. For me, that doesn't work. Yeah. Like I have to celebrate your win, mm-hmm. acknowledge your win, but also work on mine, Right. you know? Like I think, like I was in church, and like part of the message was, while you're um, while you're waiting, you're still sowing seeds. So I asked you that while you're waiting, like you still working, you still perfecting your craft, you're still practicing that sowing seeds because when the day comes and you just never know who's gonna be in the audience, mm-hmm. who's gonna see us, or what person is gonna reach out to say, hey man, y'all gotta check check him out or mm-hmm. check, you know what I'm saying, see what they're doing. That can be the stepping stone to where we need to go. Yeah, and I just I that's what I think about now. Like we like Dolph was talking about networking mm-hmm. earlier, reach going out, just putting putting your work out there, but being careful to who you put it out to. Mm-hmm. I think that's real, man. So jealousy, like it's a concoction of jealousy. I think that from my end, and mm-hmm. we you can tie it like just tag in on this like a concoction. One is a uh, comparison. Mm-hmm. One is self doubt, mm-hmm. and one is um, what is it? what's the word? Lack of preparation, I would say. Okay. I think the lack of preparation part gets at a lot of people because they know that they have the gift, but they don't work at it. Right. That's the scary part because if you really like what you do, you will work at it to make it better. You know, like you're a teacher. You want to teach, mm-hmm. so you can't. You don't go home and go to sleep. Nah, you gotta actually looking at something. You, gotta you know what I'm saying? You lesson kind of plan. You, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You get ready for the next day. If you're an athlete and you just lost a game, you don't just go home and get some Wendy's. Get a four for four. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a four for four. You just post up. You just be like, yo, watch film. Mm-hmm. You practice. You go back in the gym, you work, exercise, you work hard. You, what did I do wrong? What did I do right? How can I get better? It's something that keeps me keeps me from, you know what I'm saying, falling into jealousy and stuff like that. It's like, I ask myself, all right, so I heard Dr. Dre say, Dr. It's, Dre. it's hard trying to get 
the money. But it's harder trying to keep the money. I think I saw that. That, that was on um, uh, uh, that was on a uh, spin butterfly. So the K dot. So it's like okay, it's, it's hard enough to get to a certain point. Okay. But I think about okay, if if, if I were to have everything I wanted when it comes to poetry and coming to art, just here you go, Jock, boom. Could I keep it, or how long can I keep it? Okay. With the same work ethic and mentality I have at that current point, would I be able to keep it? And that keeps me from being like, yo. I have to really invest more into this in order to really reap what I really want to reap. You know what I mean? Like, I have to sow a little more, I have to invest a little more, I have to prep a little more. Because I'm thinking, like, if I were to have everything I wanted, mm-hmm. just drop right there. It's right there in front of you. Just go away and do what you got to do. How long would that last before I'm complaining about something? Right. Or before oh, I'm like, oh, God. it's going to be like this. Or, you it's know. so hard. Like, right. I don't know. You but this is what mind. you said you wanted. Right. right. You know what I mean? So... That's, That's just like that preparing me. for the task, though. Like, yeah. you get to, you work hard, work hard, work hard till you get to that level. So, like, for us being poets, right? Mm-hmm. We set out a goal, what, like a year ago, mm-hmm. two years ago, that we was going to get, like, at least one feature every month. And mm-hmm. we did that. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, we were just going to these open mics we right. were we were working we was practicing in the basement we were writing new stuff we would hit each other up at work like listen i got this idea got that idea that's that hungry part yeah you know because we didn't have that level yet then we got to the level of oh now we're getting featured at this build and this platform that every month it yeah. was something like so something going on every month because we just kept grinding even in the season of achieving those shows we still kept we were still in the basement mm-hmm. we were still throwing out ideas we were still you know it was fresh on our mind i think that each level well each level comes a new challenge mm-hmm. so once you get to that level like oh i like to write i like to read i want to write a book yeah you write the book okay now you gotta get people to buy the book how do you get people to buy the book you canvas the book. Mm-hmm. So you study people who are really good at doing that. Mm-hmm. Like these top sellers. Or how did they start out? Was they trapping out the trunk? Or were they, you know what I'm saying, going to the church? And yeah. like, hey, man, I got a book. Or whoever. Yeah. You got it. That's the product. That's a part of you. So it's like, man, I mastered this at this level. Mm-hmm. Go to the next level. Oh, man, this is tough, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for this. I don't, like, it's too much going on. It's not too much. It's just a new level. Count the cost. Yeah. Count the cost, my you know man. I'm saying you knew what you was getting into. Like no risk, no reward. You know you gotta put your grit on. Cause it's even it's even more sacrifices that has to be made when you get to that level. For sure. Then you you know not necessarily making right now. Mm. So a lot of time, uh, a lot of it's a lot of commitment that has to be put into this thing. Mm. You made. Miss time with family, miss time with your girl, miss time with all that stuff. Um, speaking of books, actually, I actually saw a video. Was it yesterday or Tuesday? It was this week. I saw a video on YouTube of a lady who sold like a bestseller like at least four or five times. And so she was like, I, I was like, okay, how she do this? And what she said was, she just made a series. Mm. I mean, it's probably obvious for some people, but for me, it was like. Make a series because I got makes so much I'm like, sense. oh snap, I just made a short story. <laughs> what? All I gotta do is make a series like Harry Potter or something. This could be, it <laughs> yeah. could be something, you know what I mean? But for sure, for sure. I was just thinking about that, like just add on to what you already have, which is, you know, like I said, it's simple stuff people already know about, but it's like these common sense things that we take lightly when we get in our feelings or when we get into a rut or when we get stuck on, you know, some kind of negative emotion that can drag us down. Right. It's like, yo, get back to the basics. Yo, just keep on doing what you're doing. Keep planning, Man. keep attacking. You know what I mean? Like even when it comes to so on the flip side of that though, right? Gotcha. Let's say you get it. Let's say you got it. Let's say it's here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you got everything you want. Another thing that can come up could be that greed. Like Ooh. for instance, you know what I mean? We did a show every month, and honestly, if we would have kept on going, it may have got to the point where we had to turn some shows down because there's too much going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that greed can over overwhelm you where you saying yes to everything and then all of a sudden you have to say no later on. Hmm. 
And yeah. that's, that's kind of like messing up your reputation at that point. You know what I mean? Like, what do you think with that? I mean, I don't know if you want to point with that. But. I mean, greed is another thing that you can get lost in. Mm-hmm. Just like you can get lost in the jealousy and the envy, you can get lost in the greed because having too much of something is unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Just like having not enough of something is mm. unhealthy. Yeah. You need a healthy balance. So you need yeses and you need no's. Yeah. That greed for us, like we in we in the art, we're we're getting known, mm. we're getting exposure. It got to the point where people like would see us. Yeah. At random places. Hey man, y'all I remember y'all. Y'all do poetry, right? Yeah. And like, I'm not gonna lie, that felt kinda good the first couple times it happened. You know, cause I was just like Y'all talking to us? I know them dudes. Like, for real? Ain't y'all the ones that be like, on a... <laughs> and you just be like, dang. So, like, for me, I had to have, tell myself, like, yo, don't let it get to your head, man. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't remain humble at all times because it's not still not your head, turn man. yet. That's, that's the key. Not letting it get to your head. Cause... Right. Because greed is powerful, man. Greed will cost you a lot of things of your character. You saying yes to so much stuff, at the end of the day, you gotta say no to something. You may, like I said, a reputation. Okay. Like, I, like I said, I, I, I sat back and thought about, you know, how these things can affect me. Like personally, if I would have fought for myself in these situations or mm-hmm. if I had been in a situation, like what, um, you know, what has been the outcome. And I thought about greed for a second. I thought, well, greed is probably one of the most serious ones. Mm. Maybe second to less, maybe. You know what I mean? But greed, like, okay, you, you bite off more than you can chew. And then you got to renege. Like, bro, you got to renege, bro. And you know reneging. <laughs> you know reneging. Then you, you can't, can't renege. Can't renege, you can't renege, renege son. It's like. That is like <laughs> against all rules. And I think about that. Like, I don't, I don't want to be in a <clears> position <throat> where I have, to, I have to renege on something important. Yeah. Like. I think about if I if I say yes to too many shows, and next thing you know, I gotta say I gotta say no to either an event for my son or mm. I gotta sell an event for you know my niece or something important I gotta go to outside of poetry now because I wanted to be on the scene so much. You wanted to be the man. I was so pressed. You know what I'm saying? Like like you want to have your hand in every pot. Yeah, right? yeah. Just because you want to get to that point where you can be like, oh, I'm I'm established now. I made it in the game. I got my foot set. Right. I'm good. When the nationality is like, nah, bro, you can't say yes to everything. You can't. How do you know when to say yes? I feel as though that if it's something that you were searching to do that fits the scheme of what you're trying to accomplish, okay, that's a yes. Okay. If you're forcing the fit, like I can get my my item, my art, my whatever into that line, like this will help me get to that level. If I go and do this, mm-hmm. or if I push it this way, like I think that is forcing the fit. Yeah, yeah. Because you're you're trying. Like I see, like okay, you're passionate about it, but you're directing your passion the wrong way. Mm-hmm. I think, like okay, this is my lane. I'm going to conquer this lane. Mm-hmm. So with me conquering this lane, I can't swerve into this lane and try to dabble in what they're doing because I haven't mastered my mm-hmm. lane yet. Once I'm able to master my lane, then people will see that and then it will like they will gravitate towards it because it'll create more lanes, it will create avenues and mm-hmm. allow me to just dabble into. If I'm a poet and somebody asks me to speak at uh, a graduation, yeah. Somebody asked me to speak at a church. Yeah. Somebody asked me to speak at a community event or do a voiceover for like a, a short play or mm-hmm. participate in a short play or something like that. That's still in my lane. Mm-hmm. They came to me mm-hmm. because they thought that I would be good for that. If mm-hmm. I'm not good for that, I can say no. Yeah. Like, oh, I need you to, you know, do a cooking show or something. Mm-hmm. That's not my lane, brother. I'm a writer. I'm a poet. Now, let's say it's all poetry, though. Let's say, let's say, for example, all your dreams, I don't want to make it like, like it can't, can't happen, you know? Mm. What's going on, Reed? I can't, I want to say it, it can't happen, but I'm saying, like, let's say, for instance, you have responsibilities already, just, just being G. 
Right? Okay, yeah. You guys want to be already, already, already being G. You got your relationship going on. You got your work going on. You got all this stuff going on, right? Yeah. Now you add on, okay, you have opportunity to perform at least four times this week. Four times. Three of those get paid. Okay. But you got four opportunities on your table right now. Priority goal. How do you go about that? How do you go about that? Realistically, though. Realistically, you got to iron out your priorities. Okay. That's like, if I have to work, and I have to work because mm-hmm. I need to work. But remember, the shows are at night. The show's nighttime. The show is nighttime. Yeah. So if I have an obligation that I've already uh-huh. committed to, mm-hmm. I have to say no to that opportunity. Okay. Because I've already committed to okay. that obligation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? Now, if I'm free, and then I'm dancing between thoughts of... Oh, I can, you know, do this. I can take my lady out on a date. I can, you know, chill in the house or go yeah. to this event that I saw. I can go to this concert. Yeah. Then that's when it will, it will be like, a, oh, okay, all right, maybe, maybe not this show, or maybe I'll do this show because I can hold that off. But the person you may be saying no to, you may not get the opportunity again. Right, that's the tough part. That's the tough part, right? That's the tough part. So you have to like iron out, like, and then you just have to really think back on it. For me, I'm a faith based man. I'd have to pray on it, like, Lord, <laughs> Lord, help me, please, because I just don't. I'm trying. Like, I want to do this, but I yeah. got this going on. What should I do? Cause I say, for example, some of the similar happened to me this week where mm. it was it was a lot of it was a lot of stuff going on this week. But I didn't know I had to be home at a certain time because I got to get my son. Yeah. She got to go to work. And we got to make sure that we the timing is connecting with that. But at the same time, it's like, yo, I want to go here because I want to perform because I got to do this. I got to get get this exposure going on. But it's like, if you go ahead and do this, you got to come back home and do the temperature check before you walk in the house to make sure she ain't mad at you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, you got to, it's like, I like but you want to, but you want to get, you know what I'm saying? You want to get the money. You want to get the exposure. You want to me want to make it happen. So it's kind of like, like you say, you got to iron your priorities out. And I'm uh, speaking from experience, like it was tough trying to iron your priorities. It was tough to try to iron it out. But God. I mean, it had to get done. At the end of the day, out of the four opportunities, I chose like two. You know what I mean? I chose two. Okay. And then it was like, okay, out of those two, it was perfect. It was it was perfect. It was fine. It was great. But at least I was able to at least keep some sanity when I came home. I was able to maintain some kind of balance with my work life. I was able to have peace of mind. It wasn't like I was stressing about, oh, I got to be here this time, or I got to worry about finding a babysitter. It was kind of like, okay, it was a lot easier to manage. But like I said, I could have been greedy and said, nah, you're going to make it happen. And then... Yo, we got opportunity. We going so, on. We going so, on. on the, uh, <laughs> so 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 so. We going okay. to house theater. You know. I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad yeah. you said that because so do you, would you say that there are certain times where it's good to be greedy? It's not good, like good to be greedy. Not greedy, but a little mm-hmm. selfish type. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because time. I think mm-hmm. that that's one. Of, that's one of those tough alleyways where you know this is going to be good for you in the long run. So you might have to sacrifice probably getting word. cussed it's out. Word. It's a key word right there. You know there. what I'm saying? A sacrifice. 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 It's like, so it's like, it's like what's going to be affected if you decide to go all out? Like, it's crazy, bro. Like, it's like, yo, right now, bro, it's like, man, I wish I can, I can go all out with my dreams, right? But yeah. realistically. Realistically, you have you obligations. You got obligations, right? Obligations. So it's like, what will be affected? That always gets me. What will be affected if I decide to, man, you know what? I'm about to make sure I'm booked at least twice a week. What will be affected right. because it's conflicting work schedules. It's a baby. It's, it's, it's getting up in the morning. It's making sure you want time to work. Make sure your deadlines are met. Deliverables are met at work. It's like, yo, it's, it's a lot. Gas it's money. Like, gas you know what money. Food, <laughs> like food. You know what I'm saying? Sleep. Like, you have you to got, factor gotta, in. It's, it's 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 something I'm still working but on. But what's crazy but though? Yeah, it's been done before. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to do this. It's being yeah. done yeah. now. We don't want to do this. Like we're the only ones. We're not the only ones. There's what people, time, you know. For Julius first, I'm the see. It's really like oh, everything has its place. 
So you have to capitalize on the the, the amount of time that you give uh-huh. that, you know? Yeah. Like, come on, man. Family come time. Come on, man. Family time is family time, right? Mm-hmm. Then you have work time is work time. Mm-hmm. School time is school time if you're in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, self time, personal time is personal time. Mm-hmm. You got to have time for your passion. You got to keep investing in your passion. You have to, you have to, you have to. Because if you don't... Because it's, it's, it's not optional, you know what I mean? It's not optional. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just trying to figure out how to do it. And that's key. Your sister actually said online, budget, schedule the life, set time aside for rejuvenate you first. Then budget time for the other roles you play afterwards according to priority, of course. Got the military tactics. Military okay. tactics. Okay. okay, military tactics always just... Okay. The OODA loop. Observe, orient, decide, act, then repeat. There's no right answer sometimes. That's true. That's that no no right answer sometimes. That'd yeah, preach. that's true. That that's is, true. That <laughs> you got the best intentions and still, you know. They'd be wrong. It'd be, <laughs> when you write you like, wrong, when you wrong, you wrong. <laughs> Boy. Oh. This is your life right here, man. Like, but so why not just go with like what your gut is saying, you know, put in that I understand that this is making this decision is gonna put me in this plat yeah. in this position. Yeah. Not making this decision is gonna put me in the risk of not being able to be in more positions. Right, right, right. You know? Exactly, exactly. So it's like rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Right. What I'm gonna do. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on, man. At the end of the day, you did you made the best decision for that moment, I feel. Mm-hmm. You know? So you observe the situation. We took it through a little orientation of like, okay, how is this is gonna look? You made your decision. Yeah. You acted on it, and then you repeat. Oodle loop. Hit the oodle loop. Oodle, on it. Hit the oodle loop. Hit it with the oodle loop. Yeah. But I really no. think I really I really think that's that's uh that's key. That is key. I so think that's key. We're doing that. How how how. Before you, before it becomes action, how can you train your mind to visualize these things? What I mean by that, like, okay, you don't know if it's going to be a slow week or a busy week. How do you train your mind for the slow weeks? Like, all right, if I got some downtime, because like the way of the day can change at any time. Mm-hmm. I got some downtime. What can I be working on? Mm-hmm. You know, or I got this poem I want to finish. Let me practice that. Yeah. Or my son's asleep. Let me just try to read up on something, or let me watch something that's gonna help me better me. Or you know what I mean? That's something I need to work on some more because, as much as I I, I try it, I try to incorporate practice writing and reading, um, and also investing time and try to find events to go to and you know just doing things whatever I need to do. Um, sometimes it gets a little overwhelmed with the stuff I got on my plate. Got you. You know, honestly, but at the end of the day, it's like, I know that this is what I signed up for. So at the end of the day, I'm going to make sure I follow through with the most important things. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got some non-negotiables that I'm not compromising for anything. Mm. And I think that helps me stay focused on my path. Because like I said, as long as it's not me trying to negotiate my non-negotiables, I'm good. Like if there's something on the side, all right, cool. Okay, I can, I can, I can possibly miss this one. It's all good. You know what? I can't make this one. It's cool. Okay. Or you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. But if it's something like, oh, nah. If it's Saturday nine, nah, I can't make it. You know what I'm saying? If it's Saturday nine to twelve, nah, I'm at bus boys and post. Or if it's like, if it's first Wednesday of the month and we perform, nah, I already told all I'm gonna be there. Yeah. You know okay, what I'm saying? Okay, like, okay, okay, okay. You know what I mean? So as yeah. long as it's non-negotiables. I think that helps me stay balanced with trying to decide which what to do, trying to decide when to go out, when to make time to actually do this. Cause like I said, during the summertime it was a lot easier because it's summertime. Gotcha. But I think during now during the school year, kids are back at school. It's like you have to be in that mindset to keep on going, keep on going. But during the summertime, it was so it was so easy to just you know pick up and go, pick up and go. All right, all right, I got a show. Everybody free. Let's just go. Or you know what? You off tomorrow? Or I'm off too. It's summertime. I'm about to go perform. You know, but now I gotta, I gotta really calculate. 
you know? Yeah, so, like, now it's like, okay, when everything is fast-paced, how do you train your mind to handle the fast pace? Mm-hmm. Like, certain stuff you got to, you know, kind of catalog. Mm-hmm. All right, I got this going on right now. I'm, I'm really busy with the school stuff. I got a lesson plan. I got to do this, that, and the third mm-hmm. for today, tomorrow, the next day. Then I got, you know, my family stuff over here. Yeah. I got clean, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I got, you know, I got to cook some things. Machine like straight, I, yeah. All of that. Just, and then for me, okay, my my day goes, you know, you wake up, you know, you go to work. My my responsibilities aren't as, in, like, compact as yours. Mm-hmm. You got a whole family situation going on. Me, I just got to wake up, make sure I wake up on time, take my lady to work, make sure she's there on time. Go to work, make sure I'm there on time. Go through the day. Mm-hmm. At the end of my day, go and plan for the next day. Right. You know, when I get off work, then I have time to, you know, develop something for the art. I have me time, which, mm-hmm. you know, for me, I just go to the gym, do whatever I need to do, then dedicate time to the art, then dedicate, you know, personal time with my lady because you need that. Right, right. Now it's not just you. Mm hmm. So you're sacrificing all that me time that you could have had mm-hmm. or that, you know, passion time if there's stuff going on because you got to think she may have something that I, you know, have to support because I'm a support system. Mm-hmm. I may have something or we may have something that we already committed to because we're in groups through like church. We do groups, you know, through our communities. Sometimes like us being alphas, we may have to go and support, you know, mm-hmm. our respect chapters because they asked us to attend this or do something or something. Categorizing everything and having like a planner mindset, I think will help anybody execute. Yeah, proper proper preparation is key. Proper scheduling. Proper scheduling. You know what gets in the way? Pride. I pride like gets that. in the way. Pride like gets in the way, bro. Pride does because pride me. will have you wanting to say, you know what? Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. You can be mad all day. I'm going. I'm going out. You know what I'm saying? I'll be back tonight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be back tonight. Pride will have you. Pride will have you out here looking crazy, man. Yeah. Um, pride will really have you because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about times when, you know, I had to step aside and be like, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, but it was all based off pride. And it was like, at the end of the day, you don't feel as accomplished or as fulfilled making that step because you made it because you wanted to be like, not even taking the, the necessary selfish time for yourself, like you said, necessary selfish moves that you should make just yeah. to make you good, but more so like a, in a, like a prideful thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, nah, this is me. Like, like you know, that gets in the way. One of my favorite Artists, poets, people in the world had a bar said, "I royal rumble with pride is do or die." Yeah, right. That's probably like the one of the most realest things ever written, spoken, anything because it's like we do that. Mm-hmm. Pride in Proverbs says, "Pride comes before pride the fall." Before. Yeah. So we acknowledge the fact that we're very prideful people especially black Mm. just being real so we got to make sure that we talk to our pride me i have to talk to my pride because i'm a very prideful person i'm gonna go in there and be like okay let me just go ahead and sign myself up for x y and z knowing that i'm gonna stretch myself thin but i can do it i tell myself oh man i could do it yeah oh would you you need what? You need me to be where? By what time? Right, right. Six thirty? Right. Oh yeah, I get off at six. You that's know, but I'm gonna be there on time. I, I shoot, I could leave early. Yeah, that's another side to it too. You know, you got it. Like, it's a lot that comes with pride, man. Pride is really sacrificing your honesty to your ego. That's why I say that ego. Why I say you brought the key point of reputation. Like you always. Knowing when to say no because you may always say yes. You know what I'm saying? Think about it, your pride, your reputation on the line. Yeah. You don't want to say no because you want to keep that same energy going. Like people know that I'm dependable in this area. Let me not say no. But it may be you may be jeopardizing something important. Maybe jeopardizing something that you need to be. You know what I mean? Jeopardizing 
a point in a relationship that needs to be uh, attended to. If that makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that that, that pride is, is is a killer, man. Like you said, pride come before the fall, and the consistency of that pride is what leads to that fall. Like it can be that one false move, and you could have did a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying, before, but that one false move, you end up <laughs> falling flat on your face. All it takes is that one bad step, man. I feel like people who've been there before mm-hmm. are so much more cautious. Facts, 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 you know? facts, facts. Yeah. Like, oh, no, I did this before. Yeah, I can't. I've been there before. Nah, I'm good. Nah, man, I'm, I'm good. good. Or some people like to play with the fire. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? It wasn't that bad when I fell flat on my face nah. and embarrassed myself. It ain't, ain't hurt that bad. It ain't hurt that my bad. My nose didn't bleed that man, bad. Man, dang. Did I break my arm that time? <laughs> or, nah, you... I walk it off. <laughs> It's like, come on, man. When is it gonna kick in that your pride will, you know, will trip you up every your pride time? Will trip you up, man. If you holding on to your pride, like you can run so much faster, you can get there so much quicker if you let go of your pride. That's the thing. You don't even gotta be like pride for a negative reason. It could be pride. You know, you pride come, it. it could be coming from a good place, but pride is still pride. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pride is still pride, pride is and I think I think pride. as long as we can expose it for what it is, I think that keeps us in a safe place. Like, we talking about it right now, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, we, and, and, and we're sharing our experiences. The fact that we're exposing this is help allowing us to, to stay in, you know, a safe place as far as making sure that we are managing our yeses and our noes better. Cause that's the, like I said, that's the whole point of this, is to manage yes and noes better. Once you are to a point where you have handled rejection and acceptance, you're able to handle that, now the ball is in your court. Mm. What are you doing now? You know what I'm saying? How are you managing the power of that voice, the power of your choice? So under that mindset or under that pride, right, mm-hmm. is it hard for your yes to be your yes and your no to be your no? I think it's situational. It depends on what, like, like I think you brought up a good point. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to retrace it exactly with what you said. But it's like maybe 15 minutes ago we were talking about just 15 minutes ago um, how when you are in a certain place where you want to be everywhere you yeah. want to make sure that you are there you want to make sure that you are seen you make sure that you are you got that exposure you got opportunity to do all this stuff mm-hmm. that pride will make you want to say yes to a lot of things and then you biting the bullet later because you gotta say yo you know what ah my bad I can't, I can't make do it, it. My yeah, bad, I can't, yeah yeah I gotta do this that third. I forgot about this. And it makes you less reliable exactly. when you keep doing that. Exactly. I've learned that from experience. And that's very, once you establish like a certain mindset, or a certain perspective of what you, how you would like to grow mm. as a person and for the sake of our podcast as a poet, mm. you practice consistency different. Facts. You practice consistency in what you say and how you study and how you, how you prepare and what you say no to. Mm-hmm. You know, and where you go and where you don't go Mm -hmm. and the people you associate with, all of that. You practice the consistency in those things because you want to do so well that you now have a cautious mindset of, oh, I didn't been that way. I can't go Mm -hmm. that way no more. That was cool, but nah, that was in that season. Yeah. You know, so it's like, man, I want this to work. Something's got to change. So being reliable, the reliability of people seeing nuance and saying, I know that they about to bring something crazy to the, to the stage. Oh, they about to be good. I've seen them before. Mm-hmm. They expect that. Mm-hmm. And for us to go up there because we didn't prepare, because we chose to, you know, be jealous of somebody else's mm-hmm. craft or we chose to be greedy mm-hmm. or, you know, we let the lust of the situation or, or whatever we was, because you can lust after anything like it doesn't always have to be sexual. Right, sexual. right, right. You can lust right. after power. You can lust after after attention. Yeah. You know, we let those things get to us that it made us mediocre. Mm. And then our stock dropped. You were so pressed. You were so pressed to get to this level. You had to beat it. You just had to get up there that you ain't know how to stay there and get to the next level. I know we speak about these topics frequently. Um in our poems, I have I have a, I have a few bars that come to mind. Talk to them. So it's like, pride appears before the fall, 
the lion and the adder, they trample from the feet of their foam of supporters once they fall from the ladder of success. So feeding their beasts may fatten cheeks like chipmunks, but please believe when weight increases, gravity will actualize your plummet with one false move. Dope. You got something like about any of these things we've just been talking about? Any of them? Do you re even realize how lust can be destructive? How one dumb decision can curve the intuition to swerve your repentance for their forgiveness? Yeah. You know it's interesting. How we get so easily offended when another man makes eye contact. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or a cat, or what, what was the one? I can't navigate my life sitting on the passenger side of their ride. I have, I have to, to drive. drive. Then pull up alongside with tangible examples that quantify why I'm, I'm the prize. prize. Anything, Anything less is suicide. suicide. I can't expect to wake up next to my Ruth if my truth is not deeply rooted in the Boaz that I see in me call me king. Mm. Jay, you know you're a man when you find yourself standing alone by choice, not forced decision, but under your conditions. You'd rather be standing there than the wrong side of intuition. At least I forget to mention. Yeah. 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 Like we, yeah. we see it. Mm hmm and we react to it through our poetry, man. Because there's somebody else who may not have that mindset that we're having right now. Yeah. Like, come on, man. We've been there. And sometimes we revisit these areas. Mm -hmm. And our poetry helps get us through because we remember that time that we were there. Mm -hmm. And we look at it and we can acknowledge it now. I think that's a big tool in being able to get out of that comparing and the jealousy and all of that where you acknowledge that you've been there before and you've seen what can happen what can that. happen yeah yeah now you're like you're nah, nah, nah man nah. you change perspective now right you've grown that's maturity yeah so you're so mature in a point where you're like oh i've been there let's go here now right let's keep rising no, i'm not bothered by that no more you know fuel if you will I tackling few. Water boy, remember that? <laughs> man. Let's um let's go wrap this up, man, because I know we we oh, on man. the clock, man. Uh so if you like what you hear, definitely check us out. Yeah, iTunes, man. YouTube, Spotify, anywhere the podcasts are being played as the Poor Life Podcast, the Poor Life Podcast. Yes. And if you would like us to promote any of your artistic views, any clothing that you have, anything that you have coming up. Hit us right here in the comments section. Be sure to message us on all our social media outlets. We'd love to do so, man. Poor Life is doing a month of free promotion. So also reach out to Instagram, The Poor Life. The Poet Life. With your all promotion word. needs, and we'll, we'll see what we can do for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Poor Life Podcast, man. I'm JYD. And I'm G. Together we are. You want. Peace.